Let me introduce to you Mr. Kevin McCoy. He is a former actor and director on the stage, in commercials, in television, and in films. He also has many hats. One of them also he was a museum educator. He has served as a National History Day judge in performances, and now he's currently at a Boys and Girls Club as a youth development direction, director. So he has a lot of experience, not only with performing, but also working with youth of all ages. So please help me welcome Mr. Kevin McCoy. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my main goal is to try to make it a little bit more comfortable for you to work with your students in the performance category. That's my main goal. But in order to do that, I need to know, let's say, five things that you hope to get out of this, this particular segment. This is where you got to talk to me. Yes? I want to know about scripts. Anybody else? So everybody ready to have two or three performances per category, or each age level for History Day? Okay, well, we'll see where we go with this. <laughs> Hopefully we can get that for you, Julie. Um, a little bit about, a little bit more about myself that Megan did, may not have said, or didn't say, was that I also uh, wrote and performed a historical theater piece that went around the different museums around the country for more than three years. And so when you do historical theater, it takes a lot more research than, say, a documentary or a research paper. Because in the category for National History Day, there's so much information that's out there that you want to try to get out there. Find out what the most important piece is that the kid wants to try to get across. Basically, that's your thesis. As you come up with your thesis, then you have to start editing more and more information down to get more focused on what the kid wants to try to get across. Because by the time the judging comes, when the judges ask the students the questions or during the interview process, they won't necessarily ask them what's in the script what the kids have been memorizing. They may ask them a little bit about the research process, some other information that the kid may not have presented in his script, but what would be in the process paper. So uh, a lot of what you want to try to do is invite people to go on to your journey with you. That's all you're doing. It's just like John said, it's storytelling. What is the most compelling thing that keeps you interested in things that you go and watch today? TV, movies, theater. The same concept in a 10-minute capsule. So. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the theater or performance category is more difficult, much more research, much more writing, much more editing, but then it's also a bigger risk for the kids. The kids are putting themselves out there. Every performer does. Remember the day that you were, your first day in student teaching, getting in front of a group of people you really didn't know to try to talk to them. You got nerves that are kicking around you got memory issues. All of these things are playing into what this 10-minute performance has to come up with, along with your props, your costumes. How many people are you going to have in the performance? Uh, most folks, most people, when they see performances, if it has one person, that person has to move around a lot. Keep them engaged. Move around. Just like little kids, we like to see the movement. If you have two people in there, same sort of thing, bring it back a little bit, but they have to interact. More than three people, that's when things start getting muddled. Too much action, too busy, too many things going on. So as long as they keep it concise and keep it limited for the number of people that they have, then they can actually get the story across. Um, 